structure of the substrate molecules plays a very crucial role to determine the rate of the reaction for SN1 and SN2. So in previous video we have discussed about the solvent role in accelerating the SN1 and SN2 reaction rates but in this video we are going to discuss about the effect of structure. So first let us consider the SN1 reaction. Here you know that the formation of the carbocation is the first step that is the rate determining step. So stability of the carbocation will determine the rate of the reaction. If the carbocation is getting high stabilization due to several stabilizing factors like hyperconjugation, plasar effect, homoconjugation, aromaticity like that then the stabilized carbocation will accelerate the will uh, lower the activation energy for the first step so carbocation stability will determine the rate of sn1 reaction another factor is the steric crowding in the starting material the starting material is obviously sp3 hybridized So here we all know that an sp3 hybridized molecule has 109 degree and 28 minute bond angle roughly 109 degree 28 minute bond angle between the between the bonds in the molecule so the bond angle is changing from the substrate to the intermediate from 109 degree to 120 degree because this is a carbocation so in carbocation the central carbon atom acquires a sp2 hybridized state which has 120 degree internal bond angles so there is a steric relief from going to the starting molecule to the intermediate so highly crowded molecules will favor sn1 reaction also steric crowding in the starting material so these two are the crucial factors for sn1 pathway so what about the sn2 pathway here the opposite thing is going on in case of sn2 reaction the starting material is in tetrahedral form the central carbon carbon atom is in tetrahedral geometry so it is shifting from tetrahedral to a trigonal bipyramidal structure the bond angle will go from 109 degree to 90 degree so here this bond angle the bond angle between r1 and x is 90 degree the bond angle between r1 and nucleophile is 90 degree and so for the bond angle between r2 and x r2 and nucleophile r3 and x and r3 and nucleophile so the groups are more closer in the transition state than in the starting material so there will be a steric congestion a steric hindrance so big groups will disfavor the sn2 reaction due to the high steric con crowding in the transition state so this is the destabilizing factor the another factor is the electronic stabilization of the transition state in order to understand the electronic stabilization of the transition state we have to consider the orbital in orbitals involved in the steric in the transition state for that we have to consider a typical example let us consider the example of benzyl halide this is benzyl halide in the transition state the carbon atom will go in a sp2 hybridization state where this p orbital 
the p orbital of the sp2 hybridized carbon will possess a partial bond between the nucleophile this is a partial bond the bond is developing actually it, it is not totally formed and a partially broken bond between the living group this is also not completely bro broken it is partially broken so this lobe will interact with the homo orbital of the nucleophile and this lobe will interact with the living group orbital so this is a transition state in case of SN2 now suppose here we have the phenyl ring so if the p orbitals of the phenyl ring undergoes an interaction with the adjacent p orbital of the central carbon atom then there will be an overall stabilization any interaction between the orbitals between a in the molecule will provide a net stabilization so the transition state will go in a lower energetic place due to this stabilization between the pi electrons of the or the p orbitals of the benzene ring with the p orbital of the central carbon atom so in that way the electronic factor plays a crucial role to accelerate the SN2 reaction rate the two factors are thus the less steric strain in the transition state and the electronic stabilization of the transition state in determining the accelerated reaction rate in case of SN2 so now let us move in the examples there are total 18 examples I am giving today and I will explain thoroughly how they are going to SN1 mode and SN2 mode based on the stabilization taking place in the transition states one more important thing is the choosing of right solvent there we will here we will encounter several examples of molecules which can go either in SN1 reaction or in SN2 reaction based on the choice of suitable solvent so if we choose polar protic solvent then it can go to the SN1 pathway if we choose a polar solvent then it will go in the SN2 pathway we have discussed in the previous video considering the solvent effect on SN1 and SN2 reaction so you can go and check that video so let us jump in the examples the first entry is a methyl halide you all know that the carbocation from this system will be highly unstable CH3 plus so that's why SN1 is impossible for this substrate but interestingly there is only hydrogen three hydrogen atoms so they will provide favorable transition state for SN2 reaction the steady crowding in the transition state is very less so that's why this molecule will prefer always prefer SN2 pathway if we replace one hydrogen by a CHC group then the corresponding carbocation will be a pri will be a primary carbocation this one is not the primary carbocation it is a methyl carbocation but this carbocation is the primary carbocation so here only three hyperconjugable hydrogen atom is present so the stability will not be that much and that's why SN1 will be not favorable in this case but the transition state will be less crowded and SN2 pathway will favor for this molecule too if we increase one more methyl group by replacing a hydrogen atom then that will result in the formation of a secondary carbocation now it is a borderline situation it can go either SN1 or SN2 
how SN2 will be operated? There is a th there is there are two methyl groups. So now the stability is high due to plus I effect of two methyl groups as well as their hyperconjugation effect. So it is a comparatively stable carbocation than the primary carbocation. So that's why it can go SN1 pathway. However, two methyl groups will not make the transition state for SN2 highly energetic. That's why moderate SN2 reactivity will also be observed. So this molecule can go either SN1 or SN2 based on the choice of our solvent. Now we will go in this tertiary butyl halide which will give rise to this carbocation which is a tertiary carbocation. It will be highly stable than the previous ones due to plus I effect as well as hyperconjugation effect of three methyl groups. So SN1 reactivity will be very much high but the transition state will be highly crowded so that's why SN2 will not occur in this particular example. If you go to the benzyl halide system we have just observed that the benzyl halide favors SN2 pathway through the electronic stabilization of the transition state. Here is the diagram of the transition state for benzyl halide during the nucleophile attack. So that's why it uh, goes through SN2 pathway but it can also go through SN1 pathway since the carbocation this benzyl carbocation is highly stable due to the plus R effect of this phenyl group it will be operating like this this pi electron cloud will go and stabilize this system and the uh, different resonating structures will generate and overall stabilization of the carbocationic species will be observed. So benzyl halide can go either SN1 or SN2 pathway based on the choice of, of the solvent during the reaction. So if we go to this molecule which has two phenyl groups attached with the halogen bearing central carbon atom, yet the stability will be very much high two phenyl groups, two plus R effects and also it is a secondary, secondary carbocation so stability will be very high. So this molecule will provide a stable carbocation during the SN1 pathway. However the, however, the transition state will be highly crowded due to the presence of two phenyl groups. So that's why SN2 is not possible in this case. Only SN1 mechanism will be operating. If there is a 3-phenyl group, in case of tritail halide, this molecule is called tritail halide. So in case of tritail halide, 3 degree carbocation, tertiary carbocation will be observed during the SN1 reaction in the first step. You can understand now the stability will be so much that this molecule remains in the ionic form. The tritail cation and the halide. The molecule remains in this dissociated form in the room temperature, at room temperature. So it is highly ionic. The cation is so stable that this molecule remains in a ionic form. So obviously it will go through SN1 pathway. Another example is the allylic halide, this molecule. Here also the electronic stabilization will occur due to the presence of this vinyl system. It will stabilize the transition state via the pi, the p orbitals of this pi bond. And there will be a SN2 reactivity in this substrate. However, it can also stabilize the carbocation in case of SN1 pathway like this resonance effect. So due to this stabilization of the carbocation, 
this molecule will also exhibit some SN some SN2 reactivity some SN1 reactivity also so SN1 and SN2 both are possible in case of allylic halides and the reactivity pattern will be selected based on the choice of suitable solvents now we will go into the next example halobenzene this molecule halobenzenes can neither go through SN1 pathway nor go through SN2 pathway why it cannot go through SN1 pathway because dissociation of heterolytic cleavage of this CX bond will generate a carbocation where the positive charge will be on a sp2 orbital so positive charge in sp2 orbital is highly disfavorable the positive charge always tends to go in a orbital where the p character is maximum and s character is minimum that's why always positive charge exists in a vacant p orbital so that's why the formation of this carbocation will be highly unlikely and this this cannot this molecule cannot exhibit any sn1 reactivity also the sn2 reactivity is also impossible if you consider the molecule like this then the nucleophile has to approach from the back side of the cx bond so you can see that the nucleophile has to enter into the benzene ring inside the benzene ring and then it can attack from a perfect 180 degree angle which is impossible because the nucleophile cannot enter in the pi system and attack to this carbon halogen sigma star antibonding orbital so that's why the backside due to the hindrance of the backside attack by the nucleophile halobenzenes does not go to the sn2 pathway also so sn2 and sn1 both are not possible in case of halobenzenes in the same way vinyl halides the example in the 10th entry this is a vinyl halide it will also give rise to the highly unstable carbocation after dissociation of this carbon halogen bond leading the SN1 pathway a positive charge in a sp2 hybrid orbital is highly unfavorable as we have seen in case of halobenzene so SN1 is impossible in this case so why SN2 is impossible look carefully the bonding between this carbon and this halogen is taking place by the interaction of a carbon sp2 hybridized orbital and the orbitals of the halogen so sp2 orbital the s character is maximum so the bonding energy the bond dissociation energy for this carbon halogen bond will be much higher than a carbon halogen bond where for example this methyl halide here the carbon is sp3 hybridized here the carbon is sp2 hybridized so sp2 hybrid orbital is participating in making a bond between the halogen and the carbon but here the sp3 hybrid orbital is making a bond between this halogen and the carbon so that's why the bond energy for this system will be much higher than the bond energy in this system so that's why the breaking of this bond the cx bond in vinyl halide will be highly energetically unfavorable during the sn2 reaction the nucleophile cannot just attack it from backside and break this cx bond okay so this is a reason why this molecule does not go either sn1 pathway or sn2 pathway let us go in the next example in this example entry number 11 here you can see that the substitution is not in the alpha carbon atom it is in the beta carbon atom so if we consider the transition state 
in case of SN1 reaction sorry SN2 reaction the big 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 substitute substituents will impact the transition state for SN2 so this is the alpha position with respect to this halide this position is alpha and this is the beta position now suppose there is substitution so this R groups will also contribute to the higher energy of this transition state as substitution in the alpha carbon will make the transition state higher in energy substitution in the beta carbon will also make the transition state higher in energy that is unstable the approach of the nucleophile from the back side will be hindered that's why the SN2 reactivity will be very poor in case of this molecule. You can understand it more clearly in the next example, which is a neopentyl halide system. This system is called neopentyl halide. So first of all, breaking of this carbon halogen bond will give rise to the unstable primary carbocation here the carbocation is getting stabilized by only the plus i effects of this tertiary butyl group no hyperconjugable hydrogen atom is there so SN1 is not possible in this case SN2 is also not possible because here you can see the backside attack backside attack by the nucleophile during the SN2 reaction will be highly unlikely due to the presence of this tertiary butyl group. We can also see in the transition state. The transition state for SN2 reaction will be like this. So here you can see that the nucleophile as well as the living group are getting high steric repulsion between these methyl groups of the tertiary butyl group. So this will make the transition state unstable. That's why neopentyl systems, neopentyl halides or tosylates does not go through either SN1 pathway as well as SN2 pathway. This is an inert case where the molecule is so inert that it cannot go through SN1 or SN2 pathway. Let us go to the next entry that is the entry number 13. This is an example of bridged halide. So this position is the bridge head position. Bridget position is not a suitable position for developing a pure p orbital or developing a carbocation. Suppose this CX bond is getting dissociated and this carbocation is formed. You can understand that there will be a p orbital and the central carbon atom should attain an sp2 hybridization state. But we all know that in a sp2 hybridization state, the central carbon atom should be planar and there should be the p orbital but here the planar structure cannot be attained since the molecule is not flexible enough to attain the planar conformation this carbon atom should go upward in order to provide a planarity but it is not possible in this molecule although this carbon atoms will go somewhat upward due to the due to the forcefully formation of this carbocation but overall stability for this carbocation will be 
very less due to the less attainability of the planar conformation in sp2 hybridization state so that's why sn1 reactivity will be poor but sn2 there will be no sn2 reactivity since the backside attack is not possible in this molecule by a nucleophile in the next example here also the same situation a bridget position the carbocation should be developed in a bridget position but here the strain is much more more strain than the previous molecule why because here two carbon atoms are there in the bridge but here only one carbon atom here two carbon carbon bonds carbon carbon sigma bonds can stretch a little bit and provide some extra flexibility but here is only one carbon carbon bond so stretching will be reduced to half so the flexibility will be much less in this molecule so formation of carbocation will be highly unlikely in this molecule so sn1 reactivity will be highly poor and in the next example that is a molecule in the 15 number entry the molecule is so rigid that it cannot produce a stable carbocation after dissociation of this carbon halogen bond so that's why its sn1 reactivity will be very very poor than the above two molecules now consider this three example 16 17 18 so 16 and 73 17 entry are common since both the alpha carbon atoms possess a heteroatom adjacent to it in this molecule the heteroatom is oxygen here the heteroatom is nitrogen so what they will do that they will favor the dissociation of this living group by providing a plus r effect so this will give rise a highly stable carbocation during SN1 here also a highly stable carbocation will form during SN1 and that's why this molecule will go through SN1 pathway efficiently quite efficiently however the SN2 reactivity their SN2 reactivity will be also greatly enhanced due to the electronic stabilization of the transition state to understand that let us consider this diagram this diagram explains how the orbitals are interacting in the transition state during the SN2 reaction the heteroatom lone pair is in a pure p orbital so this p orbital can interact with the p orbital of the central carbon atom so interaction with this central p orbital will provide a overall stabilization of the transition state if there is no interaction then the transition state will be in a higher energy state and after the interaction the overall energy will be minimized so the system will favor a sn2 reaction pathway so that's why these two molecules can go through either SN1 or SN2 pathway based on the choice of the solvents. And now consider the last example, which is the alpha halo carbonyl compound. So with respect to this carbonyl group, this is the alpha position and there is a halogen. So that's why this molecule is called alpha halo carbonyl compound. You can clearly see that after dissociation of this carbon halogen bond, this carbocation will form so the positive charge will encounter another positively polarized center and this will be highly unstable situation that's why the carbocation will be highly unstable and will not tend to form and that's why SN1 reactivity will not exist for this molecule but what about the SN2 reactivity here also the electronic factors will play a crucial role and the SN2 reactivity of this particular molecule is highest among these 18 example strange huh 
to understand that we have to discuss the orbitals interacting in the transition state as well as in the ground state so for the nucleophile attacking the substrate molecule is always based on or always we have to consider the homo lumo interaction so there will be the nucleophile homo highest occupied molecular orbital this homo orbital of the nucleophile will react with the lumo orbital of the substrate molecule lumo is lowest unoccupied molecular orbital so there exists two low lying vacant orbitals one is the pi star orbital of this carbonyl system another is the sigma star orbital of this carbon bromine bond these two can potentially act as electrophile for this nucleophile what happened is that the combination there there is a combination between this or interaction between these two orbitals which will generate a new lumo so the lumo of this pi bond will interact with the lumo of this sigma bond here the lumo is the pi star orbital here the lumo is the sigma star orbital they can interact with each other how they will interact carefully see that the lumo of pi star will contain a node which means that this p orbital has a p orbital adjacent to the carbon atom are in opposite phase if this phase we uh, consider this phase as positive the phase for this lobe will be negative here also the phase will be negative and the phase for this orbital this lobe will be negative so there will be a net antibonding interaction so that's why it's called an antibonding orbital so this antibonding lumo phi star orbital will interact with the lumo of the carbon bromine bond which is a sigma star orbital so this is a typical bonding description of the sigma sigma star antibonding orbital of a covalent bond so here you can see that this lobe and this lobe this lobe and this lobe they can interact with each other because they are in same phase the wave functions of these lobes are in same phase so that's why they can interact with each other what will happen after the interaction there will be a new molecular orbital which we can call the new lumo of the overall molecule which will be lower in energy so the lumo of this molecule is getting stabilized by this type of interaction so what will happen the new low energy lumo will now efficiently interact with the incoming nucleophile the incoming nucleophile will now interact very efficiently by interacting its homo with the newly formed low lying lumo of this alpha bromo carbonyl compound so first so this is the first factor the lowering of the lumo of the substrate molecule and now the second factor will come into the picture which is the stabilization of the transition state so after the interaction the nucleophile will form a partially developed bond between the carbon atom central carbon atom and this carbon bromine bond will be partially broken so here also this portion and this lobe are in same sign or in same phase and these two lobes are in same phase so there will be interaction between them so overall stabilization of the transition state will be al also observed for this particular system so we can see that two factors are operating in this typical example one is the lowering of the lumo of the substrate molecule and second is the electronic stabilization of the transition state for that reason for this combination of these two reasons two favoring factors the rate for sn2 reaction of this molecule is highest 
among these all examples I have discussed here. So that's it. I hope I have provided some useful discussion to you guys. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. It is a new channel. I am planning to grow this channel to help and to provide more valuable contents to you. So your subscription, your sharing of these videos will help me a lot. Thank you. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.